Welcome back to Fenrir Canine Training and on today's video we're going to be answering some more of your questions to hopefully help you become higher level canine leaders that raise perfect canine companions. So welcome back guys, if you are new here, my name's Will, I'm a canine behaviourist and I'm the founder of FemriaCanineLeaders.com. This is my wonderful wife Rachel and how this series works is you've been asking her your questions over on Instagram and then she collates them, asks them to me and hopefully we can help you on your journey. So without further ado, let's dive straight into the first question. Okay, so first question for today is from Phil and it's, is doggy daycare a good idea for puppy socialization or would it hinder the obedience in the early weeks? So this is something that my mindset to this, and you've probably seen it, has changed massively. Probably over the last 12 months, I've become a huge doggy daycare fanboy to the point of, <laughs> I was like, maybe we should launch a doggy daycare. And then you had to tell me off with, we're already doing far too we're much. We're doing too much. But I, I think doggy daycares are absolutely incredible from what they used to be to what they are now, where yeah. they're very, a lot of them anyway, a very high quality, professional, clean, fun, engaging, positive environments for a dog. And I think it's actually one of the best things that you can do for your new puppy. Now, in terms of it hindering obedience, something that I talk about in my Perfect Puppy course is that we've got so long with obedience, there's no rush. What we haven't got time to waste on is so socialization those developmental cycles of in puppy development close and they close quickly so i am a huge fan of getting a dog into daycare as soon as you can and then keeping them in there ideally weekly every week for the rest of its life yeah, it just doesn't to need of, to be every day no, not just every day and it doesn't have to be all day week, yeah it can help early on when the puppy's very high energy because it's incredible exercise it's fantastic uh, mental stimulation and it's um, the, probably the best socialization you can do because it's such a safe secure environment and when puppies are very hard work so it can give you a couple a few days off a week to kind of just catch your breath and relax knowing that they're in safe positive hands and maybe it might knock on your obedience if the staff members conflict with some of the things that you're doing but not to a point where it would be not worth Detrimental. yeah to yeah. the amazing positives and then <laughs> after you've got over that hurdle sorry but you can then drop it down to like one morning a week and just especially with these big powerful guard dog breeds um that you can do amazing but as they go into adulthood and especially the males and testosterone kicks in they can become much more reactive or non-friendly towards other dogs and this is just an excellent way of just topping that up that. yeah um and i also just wanted to add that um, if it's a good doggy daycare, they will probably help you with your obedience mm -hmm. training. You know, if it's the type of one that you are happy to send your dog to, then I'm sure if there's something in particular that you're working on, then they will help mm -hmm. you out with that. And also the types of owners who send their dogs to doggy daycare, because they're not cheap, yeah. um, tend to be owners who have well-trained dogs yeah, is well, that a generalization I'd say more they're very responsible dogs they're investing into yes. their dogs okay. and people yeah. that are willing to invest into their dogs tend not always but it's it's a positive sign so again yeah. yeah i would rather a dog go to a doggy daycare with people that are paying for their dogs to be there than to go to a dog park where you have no idea what kind of mm -hmm. people and dogs are going to be there um, and you can't control the variables because also bear in mind doggy daycares won't allow aggressive dogs no. they temperament test your dogs which is why it's worth getting them in early especially yeah. these powerful breeds because you will have people judge you if you turn up with a two-year-old connie corso they might be a bit Ugh. but if it's been there since a puppy it will almost become a mascot of the doggy daycare and the big gentle yeah. giant and a lot of them as well do separate off smaller puppies yeah. so it won't be like your dog will be playing with a giant connie corso if you've got a miniature dash on puppy yeah. um that's unlikely to happen so yeah. yeah so yeah love them definitely recommend them okay so We'll do two more questions okay. and they're both around um sort of your dog in the home and play okay so the first one um is just about how to help an overexcited puppy calm down inside the home okay this is something that i get asked every single day and again puppies are very excitable it comes with the territory the, the very easy answer is just exercise them more and take them outside and exercise them if you come back in and they're still being lunatics and not settling down go back outside and exercise them mm -hmm. if that's not working use again part of my perfect puppy course in the obedience sections we do those drills 
do a drill with your dog, work your dog, tire them out mentally and physically. Don't always simply rely on play inside with toys and expect them to be very calm. It's not gonna happen. And depending on the right certain breed and then the energy level of that puppy in particular, there's always gonna be huge levels of variance on that. But if you've got a higher energy breed or a higher energy specific puppy, exercise them, work them, use as many different mental stimulation tools as possible. And if it doesn't work, go and do some more until it does work because eventually they will tire out and they will settle down. That's the main thing, but also ensure that you are reinforcing at all times calm, well-mannered behaviors when they're in the home. I like to always say like the living room is not where we do play. We do that outside or in a dedicated room. Wherever you want the dog to be calm and relaxed and not overly playful, okay. keep that a calm, relaxed space. When the dog's being calm and relaxed, that's where you go over and praise it and give it a bit of attention and stroke it and give it some fuss or maybe do a little bit of very calm food reinforcement. Yeah. But just associate that space with calm behavior. If they start ramping up, take them outside, exercise them, work them. And if you're just consistent with that approach, it doesn't happen overnight. It can take months, sometimes years with certain breeds. Look how Sully was. It was like for the first two years, he was a lunatic, wasn't he? He was. And it was almost like a light switch went off. One yeah. From one day to the next, he became a grown-up adult and everything just settled down. But for that first two years, I was having to work him and exercise him and do retrieval stuff with him and do more obedience for hours to really be able to get that energy down and it's just you've made the decision to have that dog and that is your responsibility to be able to provide that for them yeah and I think as well in terms of in general we always recommend that dogs have good manners inside the home so um, I guess to teach that that's a lot of like reinforcing and making them sit and wait so for example stopping the puppies jumping up on stuff yeah and... that's tons that's like a again i cover that in my manners sections of my perfect yeah. puppy course i personally find manners far more important than obedience it's where so many people go wrong a lot of people focus on obedience and then have a terrible mannered dog and it's the manners that cause them to be miserable to live with i'd much rather have a really well mannered dog that's calm quiet that has zero obedience than a dog with world class obedience and zero manners they're just much nicer to live with so if you're going to focus on something focus on that manners and reinforcing calm reinforcing the good calm yeah. relaxed well mannered behaviours and again that's all covered in our perfect puppy course it takes hours to really delve into that but that's what that's there and for and I think um, as well a lot of puppies tend to have like a mad hour yeah that that's a common thing isn't it it's yeah. the same with children they, what did they call it the witching, the witching hour, hour. Yeah, yeah. and we were always told that so and i think puppies do the same but instead of mm -hmm. crying they go a little bit yeah. wild for a bit and you'll learn when your dog tends to have these uh, crazy hours or when they are high energy so be proactive keep a diary okay i've noticed at about five o'clock or six o'clock every evening they have a mad half an hour. Well, then at quarter to six, I'm gonna go outside with the dog Take for them. half an hour and I'm gonna work and play with them outside, burn off that energy in a positive way to really reinforce our relationship and make it a positive experience rather than constantly being angry with them. So I always refer to set your dog up for success. Yeah. Be proactive and preemptive so that then you can set them up for success. You can reinforce that success and then they don't have to fail all the time, which then makes you angry and you end up punishing them and then it all just gets confusing and it just becomes a mess. Again, it's just okay. consistency on the leader's part. So the next one is more specifically about play. Um, and that is, uh, I love to play fetch with my eight month old boxer, but after two or three turns, she becomes overexcited and begins barking, jumping, growling and biting my hands and feet. This behaviour often begins very quickly out of the blue. How can I manage it without sacrificing playtime with my dog? So that's, um, I'm not surprised that's happening with a boxer. Very, eight months old. That, that's like a developmental stage, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, going into the teenage years. If it's a male boxer, testosterone is going to be surging. Even if it's a female, it's just, they go through kind of similar cycles through that adolescent stage. Um, and it's probably coming from a good place because they're so excited and enjoying it so much and it's just an overflow of excitement if you watch really excitable dogs play they'll play in that very mouthy kind of verbal way and it's doing a similar thing to you now just because it's normal and not necessarily an aggressive or bad thing doesn't mean that it's acceptable it goes back to what we were talking about with manners that is poor manners and if you're going to demonstrate those behaviors then this play is over 
and yes, I know you don't want to jeopardize play, but for play to occur, you need to show me, as your calm, consistent leader, the appropriate manners. If you show me those appropriate manners, then this play can go on for as long as I deem that it should go on for. So again, it might be a short-term hit on playtime, yeah. but the dog will very quickly learn that if every time it ramps up to that, gone playtime's gone there's no physical correction there and if they remain calm playtime extends the do the boxers are their intelligent dogs they're high energy but they're smart they'll very quickly learn what it is that's causing that playtime to end there is different approaches and could you get them to like sit and then when they're calm and waiting then yeah. then restart it or? so you could do definitely take kind of fetch to a more formal kind of working dog retrieval game but you can turn it into a game so we can be having the dog fetch train them to do it into a heel position then to take the object off them for them to remain in a heel position while you throw it they stay there until you let them break and then they can go and chase it you could really formalize it that would be an excellent very positive approach to it for me that's more of a, a plaster on the issue of poor manners and I always want to get to the root cause and the root cause of this is over excitement bubbling into poor manners I think that excitement will get better as they get older but we have to address the poor manners. It's part of our communication and our responsibility of a good leader to let them know. Just like how, uh, like you say, our kids go through mental phases, mm -hmm. but we don't ignore it just because it's a mental phase. We let them know, I'm sorry, that isn't acceptable. That's not the behavior we want to see right now. And again, we don't go and beat them. We've never laid a finger on them, but we do communicate as our children's leaders that we don't like that behavior. Yeah. And we reinforce the good behavior. And over time, it just gets better, doesn't it? You just have to be consistent, dedicated, and most of all, patient. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? Is that all the questions for this video? I really enjoy these. So, right, no waffle outro whatsoever coming up. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Ask it, the questions on Instagram. Instagram is where you ask the questions. If you want to ask any questions, links in the description, comment. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new. See you on the next episode of the Femrear Canine Training. Zero waffle. Nailed it. <laughs>